Good morning, beloved. Welcome to Sunday Church. Welcome to Beloved. For those who are logging us online, you can find us on Facebook. Write to us. Our handle is at Beloved Sons of God. Uh, so write to us and then if you live in Bombay, we'll tell you where we gather. Also below this video, there's a PDF file. There's a link and it opens up to all the scripture verses that I'm taking today. So someone messaged me last week. I spoke about reigning. What did I speak about? Reigning over busyness. Okay. And we spoke about you can be busy, but in busyness, you can still be not distracted. And in a, you know, in a state of rest where your heart and everything is about the Father. And so you rule over busyness. Uh, we talked about how you sanctify yourself. Uh, okay, set yourself apart. You learn to speak for what you believe, for what you want. And you realize even as you're speaking, you're not really asking, you're making your own space. A lion doesn't ask. He goes and takes what he wants. Uh, okay, and hear that sermon. So uh, I had it in my heart. I was thinking what I'm going to speak on this Sunday. And I felt uh, that I'm supposed to speak on healing. So it was just brewing in my spirit that I should speak on healing again. And then someone messages me on Beloved, uh, Priya, can you please speak on reigning over sickness? And this was literally, I think, yesterday or day before. And I was like, yes, I'm going to speak on that again. Uh, you know, and so uh, for sons who are hearing us online, uh, you know, I've already covered this before. So sermons that you should hear is hear the series on untouchable. Uh, hear the series on divine nature versus authority. And then... Um, you'll, you, you'll you know, really get more life out of this. So I love the testimony that came in. It was good to see Madhuri after such a long time. She's been with us many years ago, then she disappeared for a while and now she's back. Uh, but one of the things she said in the testimony of how her sister, someone wrote, um, you know, she had pain, she goes to the hospital, and uh, the, it's come on the report that says blood cancer. Okay, and the first thing when Madhuri saw it, she, she says, now this is where, like we start with the testimony before we get into the word, but this is exactly what, what as sons we do. A report says it was written, and then you have one report that says it is written, and then you have another word that says it is written from the father's word. And so she cancels it, or in her mind, she already canceled it before the doctor canceled it. She did it first. And she tells her brother-in-law that we're not going to listen to this because this is not blood cancer. This is wrong. They've done something wrong. And what is it that she goes back to the doctor, and now the doctor cancels it and said, yeah, I don't know what they've written. This is not blood cancer. And it's something else, or so whatever she did in that. Uh, uh, you know where it could have been in months something has happened in 10 days okay and um, I love that testimony and uh, she gave the sister a sonship book her sister she's come to beloved uh, we've met her for a few times and um, uh, uh, yeah if you we can have the phones off <laughs> or it's an upgrade to an iPhone <laughs> it has a better ringtone I'm kidding uh, and so what is it? Can we have that door closed? So she cancels this and what is it that she read the Sanship book and Madhuri said, you know, even if you don't understand, just keep reading it. So she's reading it and even as she's doing it, the, the diagnosis keeps getting shorter and shorter where the doctor is like, you know what, just go home. Uh, okay, and now she's doing uh, fine. And uh, she told Madhuri, tell the church thank you for praying. And then Madhuri tells her, but no one is praying for you. <laughs> No one is praying for you. What? Isn't that? Why? It's because it's not the prayer that fixes you. It's the word that fixes you. The church has got it, you know, they see it upside down. Uh, and that, that's why we focus. I purposely don't allow a lot of prayer here. Then you'll realize it was never the prayer. Because the, 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 the faith is not in the sort of like the church and the person next to you. It is Christ. And you come into a solid foundation. And then it was the word that she was merely even beholding, maybe not even understanding, that is transforming her. That's why the focus on in beloved is always the word. Just keep hearing the word. We had another testimony. I like to get into testimonies before the word, so you get excited. Someone else was sharing uh, a new son in the kingdom of how she just told her friend who is going through some relationship things, or just hear the one, the message on uh, dating and marriage, and then she's hearing it and how things in her life are shifting. And then she hears another thing on abundance, just somebody who doesn't even know Christ. And she's hearing the word, and she hears a series on abundance, and now she starts getting rich. And all of these opportunities start coming to her so now where is the where is the the attraction to is it to the pastor 
it is to the word because I haven't even met her. And that's what I mean. You're so drawn to the word. And now she's like, here, all of these things have started happening by just me listening. I want to know who this Jesus is. I want to know more. That's how it is. You just, it's just by hearing that you're transformed. Okay? That's why the focus on just keep hearing the word because the seed knows what it's supposed to do. And the seed will do what it's supposed to do. Okay? So we're talking about reigning over sickness. But it's really reigning over death. Because sin led to death. And sickness is an offshoot of death. Any form of death. Okay? So can we have that board up here? And I'm going to uh, illustrate something. So we're called it part one. And then we'll flow with how it's going to go. We'll see. Uh, okay? Beloved is an awake and an understanding church. So you're not understanding with your head, you're understanding with the spirit of understanding. Who will bring all things alive to you? Okay? So let's get into the word. I put some scriptures today. Uh, so I'll tell you how we're going to flow. We're going to flow with where death came in. Sickness, poverty, divorce, all sort of bad things, accidents. All of these things are an offshoot of death. And sin brought in death. Okay? But long story short, Christ overcame death for you and me. How did he overcome death? Because he overcame sin. He became sin for you. That you might become the righteousness of God. And that's how in all your areas, death is coming under your feet. You're coming into a consciousness of righteousness. And righteousness leads to life. Okay? And so deep down, uh, it's not hearing a sermon on healing that will get you healed. It's actually just keeping hearing sonship, righteousness, consciousness, that you could be hearing a sermon on abundance and you'll get healed. <laughs> because it's righteousness that leads to life. Okay? And that's why I keep telling, beloved, hear anything. Just click and hear. It's all free online for you. And hear it. And what's it, what is it that by hearing, they were praying for sickness, but their husbands awakened and started being good to them. Because it's righteousness coming into your life. Right? When Jesus comes in your life, it's not like it's coming to, you prayed for that, it's coming to that. He comes in, he comes in. When light comes in a room, it comes everywhere. And so you're not even praying and then everything starts getting fixed. She had a relationship issue, but she's getting rich. <laughs> relationship is getting fixed, but she's also getting rich. Because when life comes in, it's not pointing and singling out. It just comes all over. That's why it's not like, uh, you know, you hear on healing only. Go hear something on abundance. Go hear something on rest and you'll get healed. It's because it's righteousness that leads to life. Okay? Okay, so let's, let's read. So I, I put that first, just beginning. One second. Sin consciousness leads to condemnation. What is the meaning of con condemnation? You feel guilty. And condemnation leads to death. So the more a church preaches, thou shall not, you're a sinner. Do not covet. You know what will happen? It will lead to you getting condemned. And condemnation leads to death. That's why I always say, and I say it very boldly in Beloved, if they're not preaching sonship, don't go to that church. You'd rather stay at home. Because condemnation leads to death. And what happens? Righteousness consciousness leads to life. Sin consciousness, the more you think you're a sinner, you'll get condemned. The more condemned you are, you'll see that you're falling sick. And that sickness is with you for 10 years. And the more you're coming under the tree of life, righteousness consciousness, apart from your flesh, you're not looking at your flesh, you're going by what the Father calls you. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. Righteousness consciousness leads to life. All our testimonies and beloved our righteousness consciousness. That it is the seed that is going in and the seed is producing what it was supposed to produce. Okay? And that is, um, that is sonship. So let's, let's see what causes, <clears throat> what causes death. Okay? So it began in Genesis 2. Okay? Read with me. Genesis 2 verse 15. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying... Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. You eat out of everything. In the garden was also the tree of life. It was said that you can eat out of every tree. But of the tree of knowledge of good 
and evil isn't this what normal church preaches don't do bad do good but it's saying here that god father did not want you to have a consciousness of what is right and wrong what no he's got it wrong no he's got it right it says here but the tree of knowledge of good and evil you should not eat because the day you eat out of it you will have to live by it because you have now the knowledge of right and wrong now you're going to have to live by it and so what does it say here if you eat out of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat of it for in the day that you eat of it you will die death comes in i remember as a young girl when i was before it was in my early church days when i had no sons christian friends anybody i said uh, when jesus talks about unless you become like a child you can't enter the kingdom of heaven so i told i uh, asked jesus once i said what do children have that grown ups don't have and then i'm um this really happened i was in my bedroom i go to my hall i come back and the pages of my bible have been flipped and i see it's on deuteronomy and there it reads children who today have no knowledge of right and wrong children have no consciousness of right and wrong and that's what you become as a son god doesn't want you to have the consciousness of right and wrong that's why we are we are led by the spirit in all things that's why sonship doesn't mean go to the doctor being a son and a new creation doesn't mean if i go to the doctor it means i'm not son you're led in all things she was led to go to the doctor and what is it that for other people they will have side effects but when she went there were no side effects because that very medicine and whatever is going in will also give her life we had a testimony in beloved i put it on the wonders group where the husband was just he was drinking all bad things and uh, you know just uh, these kind of liquors that he was drinking that was affecting him and then he was fighting and then she was led as a wife at least if you're drinking drink good drinks so she bought him a bottle of whiskey oh it looks so bad jesus turned water into wine at a wedding and he saved the best wine for last you think they were just having one wine glass no huh? god is not religious man is religious adam is religious and what is it that she gave her husband this bottle of whiskey that do you know actually he got drunk and then he got so drunk that he was so condemned he was abusing in a maybe in some event or whatever but he decided after he got up he said i never want to touch this again because i hate the man i have been and he gives it up gives up alcohol and her husband is straightened out he stopped smoking and she she was sharing of how she quoted every scripture <laughs> and nothing happened but when she came into the position of a son she was led to give that bottle and what is it that she gave and she knew that she said in her heart that whatever i do is life giving spirit it's going to put this out of him and it did i like these testimonies i purposely left all of that in the testimony some of you all share testimonies to me i edit it because it's a bit too long so i have to cut short it but certain things i keep so that it break, brings us out of the religious mindset that god will do things in different ways the fruit is still life and that now she's celebrating her husband she didn't need a scripture it's life that did it okay and so that's how you'll see this so what brought in death the knowledge adam goes you know the story god said don't do this adam goes he tries to plan his own future because he thinks it's good to know about right and wrong because that's what even we are told in the world and then he partakes something and death comes in and sickness and all of it is a is a part of death so i'm going to do again two rems adam fell in a rem and this rem has the law of sin and death okay and now we'll call this the law of life so adam is here and a son is here how do you get from here to here the cross the cross is the only door to here in this realm so there's sickness here there is poverty because of sin because of death came the curse so there's poverty that means a lack mindset jesus came to give you abundance there is life here there's your divine nature d i v i n e nature okay abundance there's no lack here there is abundance okay 
Okay, now let's go to Romans 4. So before I, I talk about that, so what happened when Adam sinned? Adam was spiritually alive, spirit, soul, body. When Jesus came, when he said, I am abundance. What part of him is abundance? We spoke about this in Bible study. There is no sin in Jesus. So what part of him is abundance? All of him is in abundance. He's not splitting himself and saying, my spirit is abundance, but my soul and my flesh. No, that's why people even could touch him and got healed. Because when he is abundance, all of him, spirit, soul and body is abundance. Even today when, you're, when I'm saying that you are abundance, believe all of you. Because your flesh is catching up to who you are. Now when Adam sinned, his spirit died. Spiritually he was dead. And then his soul got messed up, his mind, right? From the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And his body learned to die. That's why Adam lived 930 years. He just didn't die instantly. His flesh just didn't die. His body just didn't die. Progressively started dying. Now what is happening when you've been born again? It says in Ephesians 2, you who are dead in trespasses, God has made you alive in Christ. What part of you got alive? Born again. You've spiritually born again. What part of you is going to catch up to the life in you? Your body. Your body. And to the degree that you are righteousness, consciousness, becoming single-minded about what the Father says about you, not what a written word or a doctor's report. You're becoming single-minded about who you are. To that degree, all of that life is going to flow in all of the things around you. That's how resurrection life works in your body. So people say like we had a testimony of health. Health is not in one day. I've seen this just observed over 20 years. It takes, you take divine health in small things. In small things and you'll realize in bigger things you're already walking in divine health. Okay? It's because resurrection life is your nature. It's a law. We are going to talk about this. You know the law of gravity? It fell. I didn't have to believe for it also. It just fell. Okay? A law means it's got nothing to do with you. When Adam fell, we fell into a cycle. If you're not in Christ, everyone who's not in Adam, he fell into a cycle. He fell into a cycle of sin and death. It's a cycle. It just leads to death. But after you got born again, you entered by Christ. You came into the law of life. Where everything in you is life. It turns everything. God works all things out for my good. And everything is, is turning into life. I've realized in all things, whenever I get some symptoms or anything on my body, and we'll, we'll go in, de uh, in depth of that, I learn to rest. I just rest. I relax. And even as I relax, do you know why I relax? Because I know that the law of life Resurrection life is in me. It's constantly pumping out death out of me. Because that is true. We're going to read that. And we're going to focus on the next week. We're going to do righteousness. Because righteousness leads to life. That's what the Bible says. Okay. So if you don't know righteousness. Oh, oh. You will come to me with all sickness problems. I'll lay hand, you'll get healed. Again, you fall sick. Lay hand, get healed. Again, fall sick. Because you don't know you're the righteousness of God. Sin consciousness leads to death. Stop confessing your sins. Okay? Really, it's in, uh, if you can say from a place of being sorry. But I don't say sorry to get right with God. I know I'm right with Him. I say sorry because it's not in my nature. Oops, what do I do? Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm acting out of my nature. This is unbecoming of me. I'm born of Him. That's why you say it. But you're still a butterfly. You were a fly... But in Christ, you became a butterfly. A butterfly can go, I've used this example one, and sit on poop. You don't go and tell that butterfly you've become a fly. No, you remind them that a butterfly is sitting on poop. Get up and fly. It's not in your nature. Even if they sit there, they don't like it because butterfly is like pollen. Fly is like poop. But you're not a fly. You're a butterfly. Okay? That's what righteousness consciousness is. Okay. So let's read Romans 5. Death in Adam, life in Christ. I love Romans. I love Romans. I, I heard on uh, some talk show that, you know, they're concerned about the commandments going out of the, the schools or the, in some places in, um, in America, the commandments going out or in, you know, courts. 
but the commandments lead to death. I think there should be a chapter of Romans hung there. The whole book of Romans. Uh, you know, it's righteousness that leads to life. So uh, look at this. Romans 5, let's read. Death in Adam, life in Christ. Okay. Therefore, just as as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin. Who is the one man? Adam. Adam sinned. It says death entered the world. And it says sin entered the world and death through sin. And thus death spread to all men because all sinned. Who sinned? Adam sinned. But how come the others also became sinners? Because Adam generated, multiplied, multiplied. And so whatever is born of one sinner will be sin. Everything. Sin is in the blood. For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. Okay? There was, sin was there. Sin was in the blood, but man didn't know he's a sinner. That's why the law was given simply so that the sin gets aroused in you. Because man didn't think he needed a savior also. So what does the law do? Don't open, don't look behind. You'll want to look behind. Don't go out after 7 p.m. You want to go out after 7 p.m. Because the law arouses sin in the flesh. That's what the law was given. Okay? Now see this. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. You know why this says Moses? Because from Adam to Moses, there was no law. The law came, Adam to Moses, they were still living under grace. They had death in them. They had sin. But it was not aroused. Okay? Because the law gives in sin. In fact, from Adam to Moses, they were living long lives. After Moses, when the commandments is given, suddenly 120 years. No one is living more than that. Okay? Now see this. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Abin, Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. But the free gift is not like the offense. That means what Jesus did. Free gift. For if by one man's offense, if by one man's sin, if Adam sinned, many died, death, sickness, poverty, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. Now see this. For the judgment which came from one offense. What was the judgment? God said, don't eat. If you eat, the judgment that you will fall into is death. That's why it says in John 3.16, you'll read with me John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But it says, but God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And this is the condemnation or this is the judgment. Let's read that. What does it say? Um, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. This is the condemnation. If you don't believe, it says you're already condemned because you fell into a judgment already. The way out of judgment, get saved. Come out of one cycle into another cycle. Okay, so let's read that. It says here, and the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. For the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation, condemned. But the free gift which came from many offenses, why does it say many offenses? Free gift, because Jesus took all your sins upon him. And it says the free gift resulted in justification. What does justification mean? Just as if you never sinned. Justification for life. The root of all sickness, the truth, is because of sin. 
but your sin and my sin has been put in the body of Christ. So the way to reign is to have righteousness consciousness. Righteousness leads to life. Okay, now see this. It says here, for the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation, but the free gift which came from many offenses resulted in justification. For what? Justification for life. For if by one man's offense, death reigned through the one, Adam's sin, death came over everybody. Much more those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. So we talked about what coming in because of Adam? Death. So what is the next verse saying? Reigning over what? In life, over what? Over death. How do you reign over death? Over sickness? Those who receive the abundance of grace and what? Gift of? So what? How do you get reign over sickness? By receiving the gift of righteousness leads to life. Righteousness leads to life. The more you're hearing righteousness, 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 I'm right with God. I'm a son. I'm washed by the blood. It's the blood. Do you know that automatically all these sicknesses, be it symptoms of diabetes, be it symptoms of arthritis, all of this will just start going. Because righteousness consciousness leads to life. Okay? It's not a sermon on Oh, God is not healing. No, you think you're condemned. A condemned heart can't receive from the Father. Okay? Now see this. Therefore, as though through one man's offense, through one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in what? Condemnation. Condemnation. Condemned. Condemned. Do you know that you can eat ice cream? Most people are trying to lose weight. They'll fast or diet. And then you go pig out or eat ice cream and you feel guilty. Eat it with joy because the guilt makes you put on weight. Condemn, I've done something wrong. Condemnation leads to death. Okay, see this. Therefore, as to one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation. Even so, one man's righteous act, that is Jesus, the free gift came to all men. Free gift has come to all men. That means you have to receive it. It's a gift. I know many people who say no to gifts. I am very happy when people send me gifts. If you don't want them, please send them to the pastor. <laughs> I'll give you my address. Okay? But don't give me a soap and a mug and candles and towels. I get these gifts. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Uh, resulting, look at this. By one man's righteous act, that is Jesus, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification for life. That means in this area, why should I get this? Why should you get the testimony? Why should you have this cancer like get out? Why should you get the best job? Why should you get the best guy or the best girl? Why? Why? Because of righteousness. Because you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Righteousness draws everything. That's why what will the devil do? Attack the message on righteousness. Let them all think they're sinners. They're doing God a favor. Confessing all their sins. You keep sin, sin consciousness. You'll have more death. And you'll realize the sickness is not going. One day he died also. Or she died. Righteousness leads to life. Slap yourself and say, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. Okay? Yeah. For as by one man's disobedience, Adam, many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience, Adam, many will be made righteous. Righteous means right with the Father. Okay? Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. That means the law was given so you'll realize, oh, like, you know, when you put some, when you want to clog out a drain, what do you do when you put it? Everything rises to the top. You put that little powder in. Everything comes up. The law puts, brings up the sin to the maximum. It arouses sin. So moreover the law enter that the offense might abound. But where sin abounds, grace abounded much more. So then as sin reigned in death, sin brought about death. Even so grace might reign. That means life will reign. How? Through 
Righteousness. So if I want, you want to get that sickness out of your body, keep hearing righteousness. Life. Because righteousness leads to life. Okay? Through righteousness, grace might reign through righteousness to eternal. Ooh. Righteousness leads to life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Righteousness, consciousness. What does righteousness do? Every time that thing comes to condemn you, to negate you, to disqualify, because you did this, because you drank Coke, Pepsi, sugar, your blood levels have gone high. Now, I'm not saying go and drink Coke, Pepsi, sugar. As a son, you'll realize you're, you're not a slave. If anything makes you a slave to it, you're not taking your, your position as a son. You have to rule over it. That means you're not an addict in anything. I can have a Coke. I'm not ruled by Coke. But I'm just saying, don't let anything negate you. You pull down those voices even then and say, no, my blood levels are normal because I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. Jesus took all my sin away to make me the righteousness of God. And the reason I should have normal blood levels is because as sons, I told you, your life is not coming from the Coke and Pepsi you drink. It's coming from the Holy Spirit. The devil condemns you and says it's by the things you're doing. Your life and my life, just the way Jesus said, the son has life in himself because the father lives, so I live. He was eating food. He was having breakfast. But his life is not coming from the fish Jesus is eating. It's coming from the Holy Spirit who is living in you. And so is yours. Your life, my life comes from the Holy Spirit that is living in you. Okay? Now see this. <clears throat> so even you will reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 6. Okay, let's read. Dead to sin, alive to God. Romans 6 verse 6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? How shall we who died to sickness live any longer in it? The cross is representation. When Jesus went on the cross, who went on the cross? You went on the cross. When he was buried, who was buried? That's what baptism is. There are many people who are going to get baptized on this Wednesday. When he goes, he was buried, you were buried. When he rose again, we rose again. That's what the cross is, okay? That's what sonship is, identification. Now see this. Baptized into Christ, okay, certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead, by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in the newness of life. He's talking about you died. When he died, you died. After he rose again, after you prayed, Jesus, come into my heart. You're on this side of the cross. And he's saying, now walk in the newness of life. See yourself in another realm where all the laws have changed for you. You're in the law of life. Your fruit is only life. Your fruit is abundance is your portion. Okay, and so what part of you is coming even as you're believing? Because what is happening when you hear the messages? You're renewing your mind. Your mind that has been dull and sleeping in Adam suddenly is getting renewed, coming into oneness with your spirit man. And now guess what's happening? Your body is catching up. <laughs> you're disciplining it. Nope. That's why it says we are not led by the flesh. We are led by sons of God are those who are led by the spirit means get drawn by the spirit, means listen to the spirit, means allow yourselves to be dominated with what your father says. We are not going and lured by what the flesh speaks, what your flesh is telling you. No, you listen, you're bringing your flesh into your subjection to who you are. That's why it says God is spirit, so you are spirit. Your body and your soul is catching up to who you are. But actually when I say it's not in your nature to get sick. Now don't divide it and say what part of me, the soul, the just all of you. It's not in your nature. All of you, you are abundance. Okay? Now see this. <clears throat> okay. Therefore we were buried with him to baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in the newness of life. We should 
walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man, the old you, what part of me, spirit, soul, body, you, you, all of you, okay? Your old man, your old man, your old man, there I am. Our old man was crucified with him that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin, no longer be slaves of sickness, no longer be slaves of death. You are no longer a slave of sickness, you are no longer a slave of death. That means what does it mean to be a slave? That you listen to it. Your body shows anything, stop listening to it. You are not your body. You are what the father says you are. Your body will come into subjection. See, after Adam died, the body learned to die. And now, imagine when you got born again, your body had already learned to die. It had a law, the law of sin and death. And now it's resurrected. You are reprogramming repro even your body to what your father is saying. So it's listening. It's coming out of bondage into your resurrected, recreated spirit. And it'll start listening to you, it'll start obeying. But till the time when you are not double-minded about who you are. You're, you know, it's like your cells in your body take note. That's why I told you it's in the small things you take dominion. You walk from here, like she, auntie already took dominion in the rickshaw before she started jumping here. When she started feeling those symptoms in her leg get tight, before maybe she was speaking all her problems to somebody, now she's like, no, this is not even my nature. It's in the small things. She just saw the fruit here, but she took dominion already there. When it came to confuse her, when her body started speaking and saying, I am tight, muscles are cramped, that's your body speaking and that's when she's saying, shut up. She's not even voicing it. She's taking it in small things. She'll realize now in bigger things also, maybe she was waiting for a lawyer's report to come in. It comes. Because in small things, you took dominion. Dominion doesn't work in area-wise. Dominion works in everything. You take it in one area, the other things also fall down. Because all principalities, powers know, ooh, the sun is waking up. I have to submit. Because the sun, Christ is waking up. There is nobody greater than Christ. Whatever it is, whatever, I don't care what you're facing, everything has to bow your knee to Christ. And Christ is in you. That's why God doesn't run. Imagine God running, God praying. That's why Jesus came in my dreams. I told him, pray for me. He's like, you pray for me. He did this. What is he trying to do? Trying to shake me up and slap me. That's exactly what you're saying. Because you don't need any prayer. Wake up to who you are. God gave birth to another God. He is the greater one. But you're, we are part of the same species, God kind. That's why we get the authority and the privilege to call him father. A cat cannot call dog his father. Only a little dog can call the bigger dog his father. Because they are same species. So when you and I say father, know that we are same species. You are understanding. Because you are awake. Okay? Yes. Look at this. Uh, which line was I on? The old man was crucified with him that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Imagine yourself buried. And then you come up. You're freed from sin and sickness and death. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, Hiral, Preeti, Tejal, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. Death no longer has dominion over you. Death no longer has dominion over you. Everything, sickness, poverty, lack, everything is an offshoot of death. What an amazing inheritance that the father is saying, death no longer has dominion. In this is all the smaller things. Sickness, your debts, court cases. Death no longer has dominion over a son. 
okay because it's under your feet for the death that he died he died to sin once for all so what causes death sin but what is he saying here for the death that he died he died to sin once for all but the life that he lives he lives to god likewise you also reckon yourself that means start believing imagining yourselves to be dead indeed to sin to sickness to death but alive to god in christ jesus our lord therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body or death reign in your mortal body that you should obey in its lusts and do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin but present yourselves to god as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to god for sin shall not have dominion over you for sickness shall not have dominion over you any addictions shall not have any dominion over you for you are not under law but under grace do you know that after you get born again sometimes for the longest time you've lived in this world right but it says when you get born again you get a new heart and he starts writing it's all christ is all inside out he doesn't work by outside signs and all of these things no sons from inside out everything about you has changed but sometimes because you've lived here for so long sometimes it feels like no nothing has changed but the truth is everything has changed it's like you know when you're swimming if you get out of the pool if you've been in the pool for a very long time when you get out you still feel weird like as if there's water around you you have that little turbulent feeling but are you out of the pool you are out of the pool everything has changed for a son i gave you this example when i met this one girl she was in this terrible relationship for 10 years and she said i love the guy he was you know with other women and i said the definition of love is only wrong this is abuse because he's with other women this is not love okay and i told her what christ did for her christ did christ spoke and christ did he just didn't speak it and then i redefined love and i said you don't love him she said no i still love him i said no you are a new creation you don't love him anymore okay he has no dominion over you and because she's believed it for the longest time she was believing a lie and then uh, one day she has a dream in which um, this guy comes and says gives her the keys she's dri- he's driving a car or he gives her the keys and says i don't own you anymore i have no power over you and she wakes up and she said priya i had this dream i said yeah he you don't like him actually you don't like him even if he comes but you don't like him and do you know that she walked away out of that relationship what a victory it was she realized that she actually didn't want him and today she's married to an amazing guy who is another son god brought another other guy in her life who knows about the lord and uh, she believed something so even after she got born again i didn't tell her yeah you like him let's get over him let's talk about this i didn't counsel her like that how did i tell her i just reinforced who she is and the truth but the word says that your heart has changed so you actually don't like him no i like him no you don't i like him no you don't and i just kept reinforcing that even though she was talking to him everything i said you don't like him you still call him acha but you don't like him and then she said you're right i don't like him but because i've believed it for so long i thought it is but you know i'm not feeling like i feel like i'm made for better things only when you start eating out of the father's hand can you learn to say no and righteousness consciousness is making you aware that your kings and priests sitting with your father at his table where you're eating such good food where you can't say yes to crap that is righteousness consciousness okay and righteousness leads to life okay we are all about righteousness those who seek first the kingdom of god and your righteousness whose righteousness his righteousness what will happen all these things will be like a magnet including divine health divine health is a product of righteousness and the father is very happy that you be a minister of righteousness not of condemnation okay okay let's go ahead death no longer has dominion over him okay for sin shall not have dominion over you for you're not under law but under grace roman 7 now this is talking about uh, you know so paul is having this whole conversation that you know i want to do good but i don't do the very things that i think i want to do i land up doing exactly the opposite and he's saying then i see another law like i want to do good with my mind but i land up doing other things i didn't want to eat eat the donut and then i went and took it and didn't take one i took 10 and he's in this 
fight and he's like, what do I do? It condemns me. And now look what it says. Verse 21, I find then a law that evil is present with me. The one who wills to do good, that evil is present with me. With me, the one who wants to do good, but evil is there with me. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. But I see another law in my members. Members means body. Warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into the captivity to the law of the sin, to the law of sin which is in my members. That's why holiness in the flesh, there's an entire church culture that wants holiness in the flesh. You cannot. You need a new body. Because this in the flesh, this has the law of sin and death. Even if you think you're holy, the one who preaches that he's holy, according to his own standard, he's holy. He's still not holy. Because God's standard, only Christ did it. That's why holiness is something to be received. If you pursue it in the flesh, you're not going to arrive it. Stop fighting it, you'll only get disappointed. And those are the things, uh, times when you feel like those pastors never showed it, but maybe they were battling it and one day they fall. Because you can't get holiness in the flesh. Christ did it for you. Receive your holiness as a spiritual gift. Okay? That's why we are led by our spirit, not by the flesh. Now see this. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into the captivity, captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? 25. Say this with me. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. What is the way out? Jesus our Lord. Okay. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God. But with the flesh the law of sin. Where is the law of sin? In your flesh. It is there. But the way how you keep it down is being led by the spirit. Every time it acts up you lose your cool on the driver. You said some bad words. You said the F word to your wife. You are fat. <laughs> what do you do? You're not your flesh. Your spirit. Don't get condemned. Dust it off. You're still the righteousness of God. And next time you'll say you're perfect. Okay? Because you're a life-giving spirit. You'll build her up. Okay? Uh, okay, so I love this. What does it say uh, before? So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God... But with the flesh, the law of sin. Verse 8. Romans 8 verse 8. There is therefore now when no what leads to death? Condemnation. And so what is he saying now? There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the that means you're not led by your flesh your flesh will act up here and there because the law of sin is here you'll need a new body okay then it will be perfect then you can have holiness in the flesh when we have a resurrected body a glorified body but right now it tells us to put to death the deeds in your body but to get holiness in the flesh not possible that's why Jesus had to come and die in the flesh on your behalf and my behalf. If holiness in the flesh was possible, Jesus didn't need to die in the flesh. He died in the flesh. He took all your sins, my sins in his flesh because to give you a spiritual truth, which is your holy, because he took it. That's what substitution is. That's what he did on the cross for you and for me. Okay? Now see, these are truths. You think like you're hearing this and what is it that Priya, you're telling me all this and I'll get healed. You will. After this message, I believe a lot of things will just automatically get kicked out of your body. Because righteousness leads to life. It's not my hand laying on you. That's a quick fix. But you might get sick again. Righteousness starts, all these lies have come out. Now that resurrected life in you, that life starts pumping out. Because all the clogs have gone. All these strongholds have fallen. And automatically you get up one day, the leg is working. You go and take the blood report, everything is normal. Everything has left. Because sin and righteousness can't dwell together. It has to kick it out. Righteousness means no sin. You are understanding. You are an awake church. Okay? Okay, look at this. <clears throat> the, I love Romans. It's my most favorite book. Whoever says they love Romans, I know that they know. Whoever says I like Deuteronomy, Isaiah, 
it's uh, it's it's good but all of the old is pointing to the new david and all of them are waiting for this you have it even peter had a had a revelation of in jesus name but paul has a revelation of in christ christ in me there are truths and there are higher truths so we go on to higher truths so it's not a, it's but priya yeah, it's scriptures written there are many scriptures baba but now they're not applicable to you you've risen higher so take those truths you grow into sonship okay now see this there is therefore now no condemnation no condemnation no condemnation no condemnation whatever you've done condemnation comes you've been a bad parent you should have done this you should have said this then this would have not happened there is now no condemnation to those who are in christ jesus who do not walk according to the flesh what you've done what you've not done but according to the spirit for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death that means there is one law that is in you that is greater than the law of sin and death that is in your members so maybe symptoms came but symptoms will have to submit to this greater law that is in you which is resurrection life so it keeps kicking it out it keeps kicking it out okay that's what it means for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus has made me free it has set you free from the law of sin and death that means i did something bad and so now i should get the fruit of this it should lead to this no i'm still okay i told you when my hair was falling that lady told me because you bonded your hair you did hair bonding so your hair is falling so first came condemnation that i've done something wrong now i feel guilty yeah i shouldn't have bonded my hair because i've done something wrong now i'm reaping the fruit of it my hair is falling and then jesus came in my dreams and i just saw him with thick hair he didn't come for other problems but he came for my hair as him and i saw and that's the time when i told him pray for me he said you pray for me and because and i i told you in that dream i thought i was looking at jesus but i was actually looking at me because he had my eyes my nose everything and then i realized sonship 10 years ago when you died it's all christ and he just told me to rest go take a job resurrection life in you will do what it's supposed to do and all my hair came back okay so you don't go by the flesh the world was telling me the hairstylist told me you did this so now this is the the side effect of this law of sin and death but i'm not under the law of sin and death i'm under the law of life doesn't matter what i did or didn't do all my hair still came back you take a leaf out of the tree of life what will happen another leaf will come out that's what happens in life that's what i mean aren't you happy that you're out of this cycle then i don't care what you did i'm not saying do bad things it's not in your nature to do bad because you're just like your father but i'm saying here and there if you slip and fall know that everything god turns it out for your good i shouldn't have said this to my husband but what is it that he heard only something else something something happened and he heard and it it didn't go as fat it went as fine you are, you are fine you are not fat you are fine <laughs> that's what i mean i'm just saying leave it to the father he works all things out for your good okay uh i'll take another 10 minutes and then we'll continue next week okay so look at this so truth i love this chapter the like, really i love this chapter i feel like giving this chapter to everybody xerox it put it on your walls okay for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh see this it was weak through the flesh this is so truth god did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh that's why jesus had to come and take on a body because death came in the body adam died and then the body started dying so now how does he pay it back he has to walk perfectly on your behalf and my behalf right so it says god did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin he condemned sin in the flesh whatever sin you do today is called sin in the flesh just know that whatever is called sin in the flesh all 
द सिन इन द फ्लैश हैज़ बिन कंडेम्ड इन द बॉडी ऑफ क्राइस्ट दैट मीन्स इट हैज़ बिन पुट इट हैज़ बिन सैटिस्फाइड इन क्राइस्ट बॉडी दैट्स वाई द थॉर्न ऑफ क्राउंस फॉर ऑल योर नेस्टी थिंकिंग द नेल्स इन इज हैंड्स फॉर ऑल द रॉन्ग थिंग्स यू डू विथ योर हैंड्स द नेल्स इन इज फीट फॉर ऑल द टेरेबल थिंग्स एंड द टेरेबल प्लेसेज योर फीट हैव गॉन फॉर फॉर द विप्स ऑन हिज बैक फॉर ऑल आर सिकनेसेज everything christ has taken it the punishment his the sin of our the the sin in the flesh what we have has been condemned in his body that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us so one second so he has taken condemnation in his body so that we are getting what the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us we are getting something ulta opposite okay might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit that's why we don't go by the flesh if you live your life by the flesh it is going to condemn you what does it mean you are going to goof up here and there and then you get your right standing with god looking at your flesh that i am good today because i was good to my wife or i was bad to my wife and if you get your standing based on what you are doing it says at some point it's going to lead to death it's going to lead to condemnation you're never going to be happy and that's the time you have to dust it off and start living your righteousness and right standing thank you father i know i shouldn't have said that it's not in my nature i thank you father and i thank you that i'm still your i'm a son of your blood i'm just like you father that's when you shake it off and get up and still walk because it's not based on you it's based on what christ did for you righteousness do you know that righteousness leads to life the devil can't doesn't have any hook in you because he knows oh i tried to get this person condemned think they're the worst sinner so i can put some sickness on them just shakes it off and gets up and says i'm the righteousness of god every time he has no hold on you righteousness leads to life righteousness leads to walking just like him the more you think you're a sinner you'll sin you'll fall sick also you'll be poor also righteousness you know more you know you're born of your father just of his blood because he came and dwell dwells in you you'll walk righteously you'll live righteously even if you don't want to get rich give us all your money righteousness leads to abundance it is impossible for a son to be poor there are many people who've come here in beloved they just got sporadically rich because righteousness leads to abundance you don't want it it will happen write a check to beloved we are very happy we spend it very well we go to maldives i'm kidding i did not use beloved money for maldives but even if i did what is the salary of the person who is giving you life yeah that comes from the world thinking yeah the give it to all the poor that is and you just live in your rickshaw that doesn't come from the kingdom thinking okay that's we'll i'll take a sermon on that once um the father celebrates you the father celebrates his son he'd be very happy to do that if when i used to give before i used to purposely write to the pastor and say this is only for you please don't go give it to the poor go and spend all the money go to the richest place and buy whatever you want i used to do that because i believe that's the father's heart for the son okay um you know why the poor are poor it says don't give them money in the bible it says tell them give them the good news why give them money you know because good news if they know who they are poverty can't stick to you it will fall off righteousness leads to life get them into the kingdom you'll give them money again they'll need it tell them tell them the good news so that they get out of poverty long term fix okay um see this for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh god did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin he condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh that means how i'm going to please god by what i'm doing but those who live according to the spirit the things of the spirit for to be carnally minded that means baby minded fleshly thinking is going to lead to death but to be spiritually minded mature son no matter how many times you fell shake up 
walk you're still the righteousness of god and christ okay to be spiritually minded is is life life that means no death life and peace ah oh. because the carnal mind is enmity against god for it is not subject to the law of god remember paul talks about this law doesn't listen to me only the law of sin it's against what i'm believing i want to do it's against it's true it's saying here for to be carnally minded it is enmity against god for it is not subject to the law of god nor indeed can be because sin is in the blood here okay so then those who are in the flesh cannot please god stop trying to get right with god by what you're doing and not doing it says you will not please god how will you please god receive the gift of righteousness because every time you say you're the righteousness of god do you know jesus and the father love it because for every drop that jesus's blood fell you're doing full justice to it that's what it, he shed it for for you so make use of it okay but you are not in the flesh are you in the flesh no. but in the spirit. if indeed the spirit of god dwells in you are you all sons of god yes. why because you have the spirit of christ in you so it's saying you're not in the flesh but in the spirit now if anyone does not have the spirit of christ he is not his and if christ is in you is christ in you yes. the body is dead because of yes. okay now see this but the spirit is life because of the spirit is because of so what is the spirit that has come in you it's the spirit of righteousness spirit of righteousness and if the spirit of him who raised jesus from the dead dwells in you that means the spirit of righteousness he who raised christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through this through this spirit of righteousness who dwells in you what does the holy spirit convict you of he only convicts you of sin if you don't know christ we'll read that romans 15 next week the holy spirit comes to convict you of sin of righteousness and of judgment of sin because you do not believe in him that's the time when you didn't know christ of righteousness because i go to the father and you see me no more and of judgment because the ruler of this world the devil has been judged so what is the conviction that he'll keep giving you every time not that you're a sinner in the midst of your sin he'll con convince you christ is in you or the righteousness of god in christ and what happens what is happening to your mortal body let's read that again he who raised christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you through the spirit of righteousness he is able to give life to your mortal body that means righteousness is going to kick that all those symptoms or that lying sickness out of your body So he's convicting you of you're the righteousness of God in Christ you're a son of my blood. Righteousness kicks sickness out, righteousness kicks addictions out, righteousness kicks all manner of things that are not from the father, all manner of sin everything is kicked out by righteousness. So to the to the weak it says say you're strong. Right? To the poor say I'm rich. To the one if you're midst your addictions or watching porn and you can't get out or you have these addictions maybe alcoholism what would you say you're not a sinner your righteousness of god in christ because righteousness will kick out everything it's an identity crisis okay the more you see yourself as a son you'll walk like a son you'll talk like a son you'll live out like a son okay righteousness leads to life so it's a spirit of righteousness in you let me finish that uh, that was was 12 therefore brethren we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh for if you live according to the flesh you will die but if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body you will live for as many as are led means the ones who listen the ones who are dominated by the spirit of god by what the father is saying these are sons of god for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear 
but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out abba father the spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of god or sons of god the spirit bears witness is not going to bear witness when you say i'm a christian i'm a sheep i'm a disciple the spirit is going to bear witness with you witness means going to show off i'll show this say you're a son talk my language okay you're not a cow you're not a dog you're born of me that makes you a son because many times you think father father but in your mind you still think human and adam when you say father same species god kind god talking to another god okay now see this it says here the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of god just think about that children of god would make you what a child of god will make what say that god a lion's child is another i know that all of you all received this so god's child will be what ha so now when you have a problem imagine god running god picking up the phone let's pray request god has forgotten he is god and so that very problem rules over you because you've forgotten who you are given up your godly place taken the place as a son that's why we don't do we don't do much prayer here yeah, no one is praying for her what i read that book yes because that seed you don't know what you're looking and you're getting transformed into who you are so sonship is not about becoming even as you're hearing you're not becoming i'm simply reminding you who you already are and so i'm waking you up slap yourself you are look at this the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of god and if children if sons obviously obviously if sons then heirs of god and joint heirs with him obviously then you will have divine nature because my father is rich i also have to be rich obviously it's not in my nature to fall sick because it is not in my dad's nature to fall sick superman gave birth to another superman. no superman gave birth to loki watch marvel superman gives birth to superman superman doesn't have to teach his son to fly superman's son after some time will fly because it's in his nature to fly the same thing oh, that's why it's saying you talk my language now i am bearing witness to who you are and now if sons now if you quietly listen to what i'm saying now you're going to be heirs heirs of me that means whatever i ha have is yours heirs of god and joint heirs with christ if indeed we suffer with him you died you got buried you rose again that we may also be glorified together bear witness with who you are what auntie did she was bearing witness everything came pull us there in a foot but she's not acknowledging she's not listening to her flesh now no you will shut up this is who i am i am a son it's not in my nature and then she comes here she sits and her divine nature because she's bearing witness all of resurrection life is flowing in her body righteousness consciousness leads to life what she did was reminding us of your the son is basically being in the midst of the problem not forgetting who you are that's being righteous you're born of him and now all it's leading to life now in part 2 we're going to speak about um, yeah i've got two pages i'll do it next week okay uh, i'll we're going to go on uh, we're going to talk about righteousness and application how do you apply that remember cts cast your care take no thought speak yeah these are simple things you're going to start doing it and you the reason why you will doing doing it is because it is the truth okay and we'll make it more practical and where you can engage so let's close in prayer here and then we we'll continue next week so just say father i'm a son in your kingdom jesus you're my high priest and right now i give you a thanksgiving i thank you from all of my heart for all the increase that you brought to my soul and just worship him just thank him for all the life you got it's just going to get multiplied ora hadariya rama vashikra hadarana mava stiriya rapa pakotolo ro ro papa hasteriya rama 
Father, I just thank you. I thank you that your resurrection life is kicking out all manner of lying symptoms, all manner of death out of every son's body. Because Father, it's not in their nature. Resurrection life is our nature. Life is our nature. I really believe even as uh, all over the world, as people start listening, all of that life, resurrection life in you is going to kick out every manner of lying symptom of any sickness, disease, anything, any manner of death, be it even in finances, it's just going to get kicked out. In Jesus' name, amen.